going on everyone? This is Matt, Squeaky Clean Air. How you doing? Hopefully everyone's uh, getting hyped up for the summer. It's getting warmer in Canada. Um, a lot of my customers and a lot of my friends and a lot of people have been asking me, well, you know, I'm thinking about doing a conversion. I'm thinking about changing my shocks or I have a broken leaking shock and I need to order a shock from like, you know, a coilover replacement company like BC or like one of your BC coilovers is leaking and you need to order a shock well but i don't know you know are all the shocks the same you know can i use this shock and this shock and this shock well the answer to that question is no they're not so it's very important to learn how to measure them up and on this vlog today on this video i'm going to show you guys how to measure a uh, typical shock air strut so not air strut but a typical uh coilover shock in order to be able to order your replacements all right stay tuned all right, some of the some of the tools of the trade. Um, I like to use one of these guys because it has openings, so it tells me directly that maybe the opening of the upper um, shock um, um, point is twelve millimeters and stuff like that. And I'll demonstrate to you guys how to how to use this. Uh, you need to get one of these little teeth um, uh, gauges because that will tell you it's a thread pitch gauge. In particular, most of the uh, uh, coilovers and uh, shocks uh, use a metric gauge. A lot of the stuff is made in Taiwan. It's very odd that you're going to get something that's not. So get a metric teeth gauge and basically, um, you know, this is this is what it is. It's a thread pitch gauge and that way you'll know what the thread pitch is and it's very easy to, to measure. So thread pitch gauge and of course a trusty caliper gauge. Um, make sure that you always set it to zero. That will This caliper gauge will allow you to measure the um, diameter or thickness of the shock and uh, pretty much these are the two or three tools that you're going to need the most so here we go all right so um, the thickness of the upper part of the actual shock so this is this ladies and gentlemen is a shock or shock insert referred to as a shock insert um, this is the lower mount obviously we're not really important this is not really important for all all intents and purposes what we need to do is we need to measure the three key components of the shock insert. We need to measure this thickness over here of the body, of the actual shock body, the thread pitch over here, so we know, you know um, what that is, as well as you can measure the smooth part over here if you're going to be doing, a, um, if you're replacing an air strut, for example, um, because your, your, your bag seals over here, so you need to know the, 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 the diameter or uh, the thickness, diameter in that case, of the smooth part sometimes you might need to use the diameter of that um, of this actual um, shock body but most most of the time you guys are going to need to measure this smooth part diameter as well as this sort of a threaded part um, diameter and the reason why you're going to do that is because for example say you have an airlift air strut or a squeaky clean air strut or any one of the air struts and you need to order a, a, a bag it's going to be very important for you guys to have these measurements because if you guys don't have these measurements, then the manufacturer will not be able to provide you the correct bag. So let me demonstrate, for example, here is a bag. This is one of ours. And here's an opening on, on, on the top of the actual bag. So 90% of all air struts start out as coilovers. You know, 20 years ago, somebody figured out that, oh, we can take a properly evolved coilover and we can make it into a full air strut. So... You know, a lot of people go out there and say, oh, conversions, airbag conversions, or this and that. No, it's all BS, because at the end of the day, it's the same shit. Um, so, if you buy a full-made air strut or you buy a converted air strut, it doesn't matter. Um, in terms of squeaky clean air, we offer full air struts. We also allow, um, we offer the conversions. But anyways, if you guys look at the actual bag itself, it has an upper opening, and it also has a lower opening. Okay, this lower opening, and it has O-rings, Okay. So the O-rings would seal on the smooth part, whereas the threads um, will thread onto the actual shock body. But it's very important to have this diameter, otherwise you will not be able to put a bag that fits over. Now this bag does not fit over this shock. This is a BCBR um, coilover. It's a very unique BCBR coilover because it has very, very unique dimensions, and I'll demonstrate in a second. So we need to find out this opening. Get one of these guys that I mentioned before. We're going to try a 12. Doesn't fit. What? 14 does. So right away we know that this diameter of the actual top threaded part is 14 mil. Note that measurement. 
Now, as I mentioned before, you guys need a thread pitch gauge because you guys need to measure the thread pitch of this actual strut body. So let's try uh, one millimeter, as it's written here, one millimeter thread pitch. Well, it doesn't really work very well because it doesn't go on the threads. Well, why don't we try something like a 1.5, for example. So there's a 1.5 millimeter, okay? And now this is metric, okay? Bang, it's 1.5 millimeters. So we know that the thread pitch of the, sh of the, sh of the shock body is 1.5 millimeters, okay? We, need, we know the up upper opening is 14 because we measured that previously. We know the thread pitch of the actual shock body is 1.5 millimeter. Awesome. Now, let's find out how wide the actual strut body is, or what is the diameter. Well, handy dandy, caliper gauge. And uh, this one has been set to zero, beautiful. Okay, I like to use the millimeters. Um, so let's open it up, very simple. Just go and measure the thread pitch. So it appears it's about 46.04. So always round down to the nearest number. Okay, so if you make it a little bit tighter, it's 45.9. Um, you know, 46.19, okay, 45 point. So I would, I can safely say that the diameter of the strut body is 46 mil. So it's a 46 mil by a thread pitch of 1.5. So we know that we know we have these dimensions. We have the thread pitch. Now we need to find out what the smooth part is. For example, same thing, use a caliper gauge. One of the three very important tools. And then by measuring this up, what do we find? We're about 43.51. Remember, always round up or round down to the nearest full number, right? So, or, 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 or not like a point number. Um, in very rare cases, there are certain shocks that will have point, point fives, but it's very, very rare. In this particular case, if we tighten it up, just on the smooth part over here, we're getting 44.08. So I can safely say that this is 44 millimeters. The smooth part over here is 44 millimeters. So 46 by 1.5, 44 millimeter smooth part, upper 14. So these are essentially all the measurements you guys are going to ever pretty much need because it's very important to have the uh, diameter of the strut body, the thread pitch, because that way you guys will be able to thread on your existing um, you know, perches and stuff like that if you guys are rebuilding a coilover. Um, you guys are going to need to know the threads if you guys are rebuilding an air strut so you guys can order the right bag. The smooth part um, and, as, as of, of course, the upper part as well is very important. So very, very basic tools, a caliper gauge. Not very expensive. can find these things on Amazon. Um, thread pitch gauge with teeth. You know, they're available at Amazon, Amazon or hardware store. So these are pretty much essential tools as well as one of these. These just makes it easier. Obviously, I like to use this one because I bought it for a dollar, I think, at a hardware store somewhere in Canada. And right away, I know it's a 14 mil. You can use, obviously, a caliper gauge. And the caliper gauge will give you 13.86 or 13.92 if you do it hard enough. So, which I can safely assume this is a 14 mil, right? So, pretty much that's all there is to it, guys. So, hopefully this helps. And uh, go out there, measure your shocks. If, and uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. And uh, all the best. Squeaky cleaner out.